Hello everyone, um, another unscripted video by Mike James. Um, I seem to be developing a bit of a theme with uh, some of the latest videos and um, it, it's, it's about coverage of stone. Um, so forgive me if I just go on a bit of a rant here, but um, you know, I think it might be, I think it might be, the, be for the greater good, um, but probably do me out of a bit, out of a bit of business. But, um, you know, I think um, when, you, when, when you get involved in things, you have to make a decision as to, as to w in which direction you specialise. And so I find myself going in a particular direction. So um, I'll just share that with you. Um, over the year, basically when I started years ago, um, I went and loaded the trailer up with some building sand, bought a bag of natural hydraulic lime, slapped it on and away, you, and away I went. And I thought, well, this is great, you know. And um, and, then, and then I mean there's no, there's nothing wrong with that you know because it's still a lime mortar but there was no thought um, going into the um, the science behind it you know I understood that buildings had to breathe lime lime mortar would do that um, you needed to mix lime mortar with sand end of right and the first result wasn't too bad actually um, and um, if I do say so myself and uh, it wouldn't be more business and. Um, and I've never looked back really, but um, after after all these years, you know, being a bit of a being a bit of an old hand, I've um, I've developed opinions, and um, sometimes they don't they sometimes they don't coincide um, with other people's, and that's fair enough. Everyone's entitled to an opinion, um, but I think I think I can add weight to my opinion concerning um, the current state of affairs where heritage restoration is concerned. And what we have basically is we have um, a preoccupation with seeing stone. It's a fashion which has is, which is developed, um, I'd say probably been developing since the 1970s. And uh, what's to blame for it is, if you just stay with me a second, this. Right, now this is a Builder Bodge cement mortar um it's uh, it's cheap and quick and uh you know it's it's the single most worst thing you can pro possibly do to a stone house and um the problem with it <clears throat> from a, from a from a purely scientific perspective is that cement contains no lime whatsoever you know it actually all gets it's like all the good stuff gets burnt off in the kiln and all you're left with is the impurities and so you, what you effectively have is 100 percent porcelain mixed with mixed with sand and that's a sharp sand in there. And whenever you deal with a low free lime content or no free lime content mortar, um, it just it just knocks back. It gets recessed really easily. There's not much of a not much of an effort needed. That's why if you if you take NHL five for example, um, that um, that breaks back. That knocks back a hell of a lot easier than a than a high um, free lime content NHL two. Um, you know, so um, anyway, so we're so used to seeing this now. Everybody expects to see um, natural stone exposed and the mortar raked back. And so when they see when they see lime, um, so so when so when they commission um, a pointing job internally or externally, they kind of you know they start they they they, they have a schema, um, and and it's this. And um, and um, and sometimes they're a bit shocked when they don't get it. And so what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to point out a few rights and wrongs and fallacies about the whole um, lime mortar pointing thing. Right. So here you can see it's something that that I'm in the process of doing. Um, it's um, let me just have a look down there. There you go. It's not quite finished yet, and it's still got to dry out. You know, you can see I'm I'm raking it back. I'm knocking it back. But what I use is um, I, I use quicklime um, because um, it gives me what I call the best coverage. Because I know for a fact that stone um, stone has to have as much coverage as you can possibly give it. Um, like I say, I know there's uh, I know there's a fashion for seeing stone, and I respect that. Um, and um, uh, and I like to help people achieve what they want to achieve. Um, but <clears throat> sometimes what people are expecting is, is a really recessed mortar. 
and so that their stone looks like basically the you know, it's, it's the equivalent of the surface of the moon and that's not an in that's not healthy um that's not healthy for the house it's not healthy internally and it's not healthy externally right, and the reason why this is all getting repointed is simply because it was all done with um with cement mortar and um let me just give you an example there right what that is is that's that's black mold and um it's <clears throat> excuse me actually what's been happening over the uh, whilst i've been working on the place is um is i'm starting to get a bit of a bit of a uh, sort of bit of a sore throat <clears> throat> excuse me and, and it's uh, <coughs> pardon me the mold spores and i'm mildly asthmatic i've known myself no, noticed myself wheezing a little bit and basically um uh, in the internal environment i mean you know the thing is lime mortar isn't sort of it's not a designer thing right it's actually it's pre-industrial and it is uh, lime is actually a soil conditioner um, which has been used for thousands of years um and um you know it's important for people to realize that the whole sort of internal external um uh repointing thing isn't doesn't it, it it can't be allowed to develop into something designer because you know it's like um, i was explaining to someone the other day there are practical and pragmatic benefits to having to having houses properly repointed with lime so you can see that um there were some people who would say i want to see more stone my my reply to that would be you might want to see more stone but it's not good for your house. It really, really isn't. Um, and if this this room should be an example to just about everybody, you know, we'll just go and have a look at, just go and have a look at this black mold again. Right, there you go, that's it. Right, so I'm getting rid of that um, and I'm pointing with lime. And, and one of the reasons, well, you know, one of the reasons why um, um, this and, and alongside many other properties um, have got black mold internally, is because of inappropriate cement pointing. You know, this this I'm, I'm, this is full of it, and it was absolutely rock hard. It's been a been a pig to get out, but um, you know, and it was all re it's all re really recessed right back, uh, which means that all the faces of the stone are exposed to the internal environment. So um, you know, when you haven't got great ventilation, and these old houses just aren't as ventilated as they used to be. You know, because they're double glazed, all doors are sealed. You know, um, windows, uh, um, all the all in, uh, internal doors uh, fit really well. You know, so so sometimes what you do is when you when you um, close when you when you close close uh, a room up, you you are reducing the the ventilation to the point where there's no airflow. And you actually get mold growing on in these old old houses, and the whole point of having lime is to it's to stop damp, it's to stop mold, um, it's to it's to make the environment healthy, not for the not just for the house but for the occupants as well, you know. So I, I, I'm I've just had, like I say I've had a, I've had a few clients who've been saying Mike Mike want to see more stone want to see more stone, and I I've almost um, sort of down tools and said I'm not going to do it. Um, I mean, it, you know, it's unfortunate that it's been kind of halfway through the job. And so, you know, you just get on with it, you just do it, you finish it, you know, you rake it right back, you let them see the stone that they want to see. But you have to walk away knowing that you haven't done the best job you could for the house. And you haven't done the best job you can for them, you know. Um, and so, um, um, and so in the, int uh, uh, and in the interests of, uh, of heritage conservation, I just thought I'd do this video just to, it's just so so that people people get what the whole line mortar pointing thing is about. So you can see, you know, there's um, there's um, there's a good there's a good bit of um, um, mortar um, covering that wall, and uh, and ultimately, you know, when I say to people, oh, you know, hot line mortar is really good because you get such good coverage, they look at me horrified as if to say, but I don't want that. And so you know, I find myself actually diametrically imposed um, um, to to what people want. In, con in direct contrast to actually what the house needs. And so what I've actually decided to do is just take some pictures of the work I do. And when anyone says, you know, um, it doesn't make any difference whether it's internal or external um, pointing, I'll just send them a picture and I'll just say, you know, this is the kind of stuff I do. Is this, is, is this the thing you're interested in? If they say, we want to see more stone, 
then I know I'm on a hiding to nothing, you know, because I've had to, I've had, you know, continually whilst I've been, whilst I've been running my business, you have to make decisions as to where, where you want the business to go. And so I find myself sort of going much more down the heritage route and what's, when what's much better for the house um, than, the, than, than, I mean, it's still pretty, it's still nice. You still see stone, but ultimately those joints are flush for a reason, right? And it basically means when you get condensation internally, it gets absorbed by the mortar. Once you have a lot of stone exposed, the, the, um, um, you, you, you can get all, you get a host of problems. Um, don't forget that walls like this are built directly into the earth. Okay. So you have, um, and I said, actually a client said to me a little while ago, Mike, I expected to see a bit more stone. I, I expected to be a bit recessed back. And I said, well, look, I said, you're, I'm trying to recover your property from the damp, from the damp proofers. Um, I'm, um, um, I'm, I'm intervening and, uh, I'm applying, uh, I've got rid of all the, all the cement plaster, all the, all the gypsum and everything and everything that was holding the damp back. And I'm using a very high free line content mortar. And, and I said to him, if you don't get, if I don't cover, if I don't give your stones the coverage that they actually need, if I don't work on your wall to the point where it will wick away moisture and where moisture won't settle, I said, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to, um, you know, you're going to get black mold spores. And, um, and he was quite shocked because I mean, you know, people like this kind of thing. They like to see exposed stone. To be perfectly honest with you, you know, if you like to see exposed stone, just rake all the old cement mortar out and just leave it like that because you're actually better off. Um, and the reason for that is because um, you can just see, where's a good example? Um, well, it's all, all that in there, all that in there is earth mortar, which I, I've said to a number of people. It's um, um, it's just simply um, subsoil with a bit of quick lime and some sand, and it makes wonderful bedding mortar. But it is particularly friable; it gets wet, you know, and um, and um, uh, it will um, it's susceptible to the elements, you know. So um, so you know. Um, anyway, my point is um, my point is it's a twofold point as well about the whole design of lime mortar thing. I'm coming across a number of people who, who, who've, who've um, uh, told me that um, the conservation, conservation departments are getting themselves involved with the shade of mortars, you know, so it needs to be like that, it needs to be like that, or the neighbouring house over there, it needs to be like that. And I've looked at the neighbouring house and I'm just thinking, oh my God, it, it's cement pointing. People, you know, including conservation officers, are so used to seeing cement, uh, rake back cement pointing that they're now beginning to specify actually a certain amount of raking back. That's the last thing you need, because you need that flush pointing, um, which, which um, you know, will, will aid the health of the house. And a word to the wise here, I just want to show you something. Right, bag of quick lime there, right. That is, that's the color of lime, okay? A lot of people get it confused and they think that, you know, maybe it's brown, maybe it's yellow, maybe it's this, that, and the other, it's not, it's white. Right, lime is white, it's always white. Okay, and the higher the free lime content, the whiter the mortar. Uh, sorry, the whiter the whiter the lime. Um, and so, so a good quality more good quality lime will be white. You know, a lot of people say to me, like Mike, you know, hydrated lime, is that any good? And my attitude is my you know, my my response should be just look at the colour. Tell me if it's bright white. It is, okay, it's great. As long as it's fresh, it's great. Right, so quick lime is white. And when you add one part quick lime to three or four parts sand, it will just turn it white. Okay. I mean, ultimately, you can see this is drying out, um, and um, and uh, it's it's a nice it's a nice buff colour, but that will go very light, right? And then what will happen is it will start to carbonate and it will darken. But it takes about it takes about it takes it, you know you, you you will see the results of the carbonation in about a year. Um, and so initially you end up some, with some very soft mortar, which is, which is, which is very light in color. You can, oh, you can change, um, you can change the color marginally, right? But you have to remember that, um, um, lime mortar is particularly susceptible to, uh, to cracking and, um, you have to be careful about your choice of sands. So, you know, th this particular mortar has taken me 10 years to develop. Uh, it's been a lot of hard work. And you know, 
getting the getting the result um, which I, which I want is to tremendously satisfying and then and then applying it to properties which will which will enable them um, to um, to to well they call it breathing but it isn't right but we'll call it breathing anyway which enables which enables properties to breathe at the you know to work at their optimum mechanically right that's what it's all about it's optimal mechanical performance right moisture transpires from the ground up and out of the lime mortar and this is why good pointing on the outside you know if you have to point on the inside if not plaster and the reason why plastering is better than pointing is because you just get more lime so you know back in the day um when the when there wasn't any central heating if you lived in a property that was rendered on the outside with lime and then lime washed and then plastered on the inside and lime washed you were going to be living in a pretty damp free environment because lime you know damp cannot survive wherever you've got loads of even if you live on a in a marsh on a floodplain and um and uh, and you have a house with uh, with lime as long as it's as long as it's you know built properly um there should be no reason why it should get damp <clears throat> because it's all working mechanically so what i'm going to do is i'm going to periodically post videos like like this um which which show pointing like that and I'm going to say, you know, that's a good thing, right? It's really, really, I mean, seeing a lot of stone um, is a, is a uh, you know, and having all the mortar rake back. I mean, just why bother? You know, <laughs> just leave it like that. Knock out the cement mortar, save yourself the time and money, you know, clean it up. And there you go. You know, you, the, the earth mortar is exposed. You can see the skeleton of the house, you know, and that's what a lot of people want to do, right? They, they're, they're desperate to show off the heritage credentials of their house. I can tell you this, <clears throat> if you do genuinely have a, a period property, you don't need to show heritage credentials because it just speaks volumes. You know, I, I, you, can, you go down the road and you look at, you look at a house, you just think, wow, you know, that's, that's a serious piece of British history. But people are going through a thing at the minute where they, they're anything old, you know, they want to expose it, you know, like uh, old nails in the wall. Oh, leave it, Mike, leave it, you know. And uh, I'm just thinking to myself, you know, really, we need to look after these houses. They only, they, they're, only come, they're, they're never going to be repeated. What we've got is what we've got. And, and if we don't treat them accordingly, then um, they're going to need maintenance um, in a bad way. Um, and a lot of stone is going to be replaced and you know we're going to we're going to lose our uh, we're going to lose our heritage and i just want to show you something this house is perfect it's ideal for demonstrations right so um just open the door there and, and hold on see this is what happens when you don't when, you, when you're not prepared there we go right step this way step this way ladies and gentlemen now you can see this is original pointing all right that's marvelous you can and you can see that it's just been troweled on lightly over the top of the earth mortar okay there's a little bit exposed you know it's sheltered it's going to sit like this for for god knows how many years um it, it doesn't really need repointing uh see so, well, i mean you know it could do with a bit of maintenance you know but it's not desperate you know it's not desperate to have the whole lot um you know ripped out but that's original pointing right lightly over the top but flush okay the point i'm making is this right originally this was put on flush it was to cover it's basically pointing as a cheap render okay and what i say to people um is um initially good pointing should be a bad bad case of plastering because effectively that's what it is you just plaster it all over the place and we've, we've developed this sort of um, this need for designer mortars and um, you know, the conservation, like I say, even the conservation department are, um, are getting involved in it. And so where I am, I'm kind of stuck in the middle because people like say, like say people are saying, um, you know, more stone, more stone, more stone, Mike, you know. And I'm, and I'm thinking, no, 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 you don't want to be living, living like that. So that's something I did a little while ago. You can see there's a lot of mortar in there. And um, and some of the pieces of stone, you know, one or two of them are even hidden, um, and it's almost sort of, um, it's you know, it, it's almost like um, um, uh, snack harling. It's about as close to snack harling as I can possibly get. Um, but at the end of the day, what I'm what I'm doing is I'm transforming this internal environment to make it a lot more healthier, so that my clients don't get respiratory problems. 
so that the place doesn't get damp. I'm getting rid of all the, you know, lime just kills off. Da black mold will not live on lime. Okay, and so the more lime you have, um, the better, you know. And just a word to the wise as well, if you've got lime pointing on lime plastering, um, when you paint it, don't go down B&Q and just get Crown and Dulux. You really do need, um, you need, need good lime wash um, or porous paints. The more porous, the better. Because if you've got all your lime, or your lime plaster or your lime pointing on the inside and you give it a coat of masonry paint, you're just putting yourself right back to where you were in the first place. You'll get the mold, you'll get the, you'll get problems down there, um, you know. Anyway, so where are we now? Oh my God, 20, 20 minutes, right? Now, I don't want to criticise people. I really don't. Um, you know, I hate when people criticise me. Um, but sometimes it's not, um, sometimes it's an, um, a bit of constructive criticism is good. So seriously, right, a word to the wise. Um, that is the kind of effect you need to be going for internally as well as externally. Because that's giving you the coverage that you need to keep your property healthy. It allows you to see the stone, you know, because I mean, it is a thing. Seeing stone is a thing. I love to drive down the to drive down a country road and see and, and see stone built cottages. I absolutely love it. And when I'm sitting in a room, if I'm just looking at black, you know, like say that wall, right? Okay, it's blank, it's boring, it's uninteresting. Okay, that's a hell of a lot more interesting, you know. Um, and so, so you know, for 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 the, for the sake of interest, you know, it's just like when you walk into a garden that's just been turfed. You just go yawn. Ah, you can't, you know, you don't want to be. There's nothing in there that that's of any interest. But, um, you know, cottage, go, cottage garden borders, um, you know, a nice standard wisteria, uh, some trained roses up against the side of the house. Now, now, now you're talking because that's interesting. Right. And it's the same with the internal environment. You know, it needs to it needs to hold our interest. So a plaster wall just painted with some boring old paint just doesn't cut it nowadays, you know, but something like that, that is of interest, you know, and, and, and you can kind of see where the, ja I'm, I'm, I'm waxing lyrical here now, because I used to do garden design years ago, I got particularly into Japanese gardens, and I loved the stonework in Japanese gardens, but it meant so much, you know, if that had built, been built by, by Japanese craftsmen hundreds of years ago, right, you can guarantee that each one of those stones would have, would have been named, you know, it was that important to them, you know, um, and so, um, so this is good stone. This is good stone. Um, and so, um, you know, I have no issue. I have no issue pointing this. Um, but I know some people do ring me up and they say, we have exposed some stone um, in, our, on, on our, in our living room. Can it be repointed? And sometimes I go around there and I just think, no, it can't. It really, really can't. Because, you know, the, the internal stone was never meant to be seen. Um, it was, you know, Friday afternoon after the lads had come back from the pub. Um, they just, <clears throat> they just threw them up. You know, it's, everything's laid higgledy piggledy, um, upside down, inside out, the wrong way around. Um, and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not a good idea to start trying to, um, uh, to, to leave that sort of stone exposed. It, all stone can be repointed. You know, it's rather like um, like dry stone walling. A good dry stone waller. You can give any dry stone waller a bag of bits, right? He will make something out of it. And, um, you know, he'll do his very best. You know, and he's no dry stone waller if he turns around and just says, it's a bag of bits, I can't work with that. You know, you can make anything look good. And, and so, you know, um, um, rubbish internal walling can be pointed but it's the amount of effort you have to put in to make it look good you know um and 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 at the end of the day um you know if it if it is rubbish rubbish stone then um you know keep it plastered because um you know and give it a nice a pastel shade of um pastel shade of paint or you know nice lime wash because that in itself is a, is a natural product and it resonates so well with the soul you know um, but anyway, I'll park it there, and I'll just show you a bit of a close-up. Okay, that's that's the kind of thing. That's the kind of thing you should be looking for. Like I say, that's gonna. Still needs just a bit of work to tidy it up. But that's the kind of coverage you should be looking for internally. And you should also be wanting to see that externally. 
Um, although this is internal stone, um, so the, the, the quality isn't quite as uh, um, uh, the same as, um, as the external. Um, it's still good stone nevertheless. So, um, you know, Okay, leave it there, thanks very much.